This is super warm in here. When I think about compost, it's really the currency of the farm because um, it is the best fertilizer in the world and it is really what you use um, to grow topsoil and also what you use to um, grow your permaculture vegetable garden. This is now all um, deep bedding from the turkeys and from the chickens. What I do now, I pile it up in here and water it down and turn it quite often to get it ready for the outside and then this specific deep bedding, I hope that I can spread this on the field and the compost that I made from the deep bedding from the cows which has a lot more, a bigger variety of organic material in it I hope to spread that and layer it on my vegetable garden. The reason for that is that um, there's hay in there, there's straw in there, there are wood chips in there um, and, and, and that is just a much nicer compost than this one that had wood shavings and just chicken manure mixed into it. No moisture in that sense, no other material. This is still a very rich compost but it, I think it's going to be nicer to spread it on top of the of the pastures and fields. Now all these uh, wood shavings and wood chips, they can hold an incredible amount of water up to three times its own weight and um, that's really what you need in order to get these kind of compost piles going. Now if you can see how dark this is here compared to this other stuff, this is where some water has um, been dumped on the steep bedding and it's like dark soil already compared to where the water wasn't dumped and this just shows you of what's gonna happen um, when this pile really will start to work. I've had little chicks and chickens go on this particular spot for um, almost a year and this is full of the nutrition and nitrogen and all of that from the chicks manure and um, all the carbon from the wood chips it's gonna make a really really nice material My chickens in there are still going on the deep bedding and they're gonna go on there all winter. I'm just gonna add fresh wood shavings to it as time goes. Um, and then I'm gonna also be composting that and spreading it um, over the ground. I'm not gonna take out everything. I'm gonna leave some in there as a kind of like a sourdough starter thing for the next um, deep bedding. So I'm done here on the field. Um, this year I did the controlled mob grazing and I really want to get better at doing that and so I'm right now looking into how I will build some permanent fences um, because our fences are qu in quite poor shape how many parts of the home step um, I just used a completely mobile system uh, this year where I moved um, these um, little mobile fence posts around with a solar powered um, electrifier and I want to do that differently next year. I want to have some permanent fences. So here where I'm standing, the field goes quite steep downhill here. I don't know if you can see that on the videos. I've had people visit that came and said that you couldn't see how hilly our property was. But here you see, this is just an extremely wet area. There's standing water there pretty much year round. And you have this, um, this one and a half to two meter drop right here into this wet area. So I'm planning on putting a permanent fence right here all the way over there 
and then um, up along with the stables there gonna put up a permanent fence and what I plan on doing is because we've had this kind of fence um, where every three meters we put a fence post but we don't need that with the electric fence so what we need is um, a way how we can measure how much area we gave those cows on one particular day so what I plan on doing is um, and we'll see how if the weather continues to be mild er and it's not frozen the ground I'll put in some fence posts but it's gonna be 10 meters between the fence posts because if you go m much more than 10 meters um, the wire will ha be hanging too much and if you do less than 10 meters it's just a bunch of extra work plus 10 meters between the fence posts it'll just help me to calculate real well um, how much I gave those cows so let's say I have 10 meter between the fence post up there and then 10 meters between them here and I give them one section then I can not just pace um, by walking down between those fence posts how much is in between so I know exactly how many square meters they had that day and how many I will have to give them next year now that's obviously only gonna work if a 10 um, meter section is uh, small enough for your cows you know if you need it smaller than that you need to obviously have more fence posts or more animals but that is something that I hope I'll be able to do very soon here and then you know this area that's just so super wet I mean there's barely anything growing there that the cows like to eat it's just wet we would love to dig a pond here and you see it kind of over there it starts to get um, a little bit drier again so we would love to just kind of dig a pond here but you need a permit for that and um, now with this whole mining thing we're not sure how much we want to do until we know that this is over it's kind of like this dark shadow above the homestead then another thought that I've had you see up there is the cow stable the old cow stable where uh, when this farm many years ago was active they had um, several milk cows here and all of that that's where the manure went so every day we also had cows in there in the beginning every day in the winter time you would come and clean out the stable and the manure would go right outside that uh, white door that you see there there and so that has now the nutritions from the compost and manure that went there they have slowly washed down this field and this is one of the richest fields that we have I mean there's zero moss there is twice as much growth here twice as much growth and on other parts of the homestead it's just because the roof collects the rainwater it goes there and then the nutritions wash slowly down here and I've been thinking that it would be so incredible to plant some fruit trees right here on the border where I plan on making the fence they would always have water because of uh, the low water level here by the pond and then all the nutrients would always wash towards them and it would make a really nice natural border for them um, so that's something I've been thinking about here's another one of our fields that is just very steep down towards the side that you cannot see so, so well on the videos but if you would stand here you, you would really see it well and um, you know one fascinating thing if you observe nature which is the part that we all need to learn more to do because that's where we get the good ideas that's how it has been working when cows or sheep or um, herbivores in that sense when they sit down to rest and to chew their food again um, commonly most of the time they like to sit higher up where they can look and see if there's any danger any predators they don't sit down on the bottom of the pasture typically but they sit up on top now that's just such a smart thing to do they don't know that but they had that given into them that if they do that their manure their urine and their manure will then with gravity and water wash down and fertilize the whole field whereas if they would have been sitting down there they wouldn't have done that so here on the field it goes steep down and what we did we did we ran chicken tractors up here and then the rainwater you know washes it into the ground and anything that the ground can't take here it's, it's going to be taken further down so that's really a good system so I just want to be able to to turn the homestead slowly into 
Garden of Eden kind of thing and if you don't have the resources, if you don't have enough compost to cover everything at once, it's these kind of things that you can think of. See you soon, stay tuned for more, thanks for watching guys, bye bye.